Well, let's talk about seller concessions, also known as seller paid closing costs, also known as interested party contributions. And in this short video, we're going to talk about how much the seller can pay and what items the seller can pay. Let me say at the outset, when we talk about seller concessions, that can't be a direct credit to the buyer. Okay, the seller can't give the buyer any money at closing, but the seller can pay the closing costs. So what that means is the seller can only pay up to the amount of closing costs and other items, prepaids and stuff like that. We'll talk about that in just a minute that appear on the CD. So if you've got a contract that says the seller is going to pay $8,000 in closing costs, but there's only $6,000 on the CD, well, the buyer is going to leave some money on the table there because that money's not going to be spent. They can't, the seller can't give them the extra $2,000. Okay. So let's talk about how much can the seller pay? Well, if we're talking about a, uh, a, a conventional loan on either a primary residence or a second home. Okay. Conventional loan, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, primary or secondary. If the buyer is putting down less than 10%, then the seller can pay up to 3% of either the purchase price or the appraised value, whichever is lower. Okay. Less than 10% down payment, seller can pay three. If the buyer's doing more than 10% down, but less than 25, the seller can pay 6%. If the buyer is doing more 25% down or more, the seller can pay up to 9%. Now, you know, 9% on a $300,000 loan would be $27,000. I can't imagine you having that much in closing costs, but that's what the guidelines are. Okay. On an investment property, it's 2% across the board. Of course, that's going to be a conventional loan because you can't do investment property on the government programs. Okay. Speaking of, let's talk about FHA. FHAs and USDA are both 6% across the board. FHAs, 6% of the appraised value or purchase price, whichever is lower. USDA is 6% of the purchase price, regardless of the appraised value. VA says that the seller can pay up to 100% of customary closing costs. And there's another provision in there for, for the seller to be able to pay some other costs as well, which we won't get into in the context of this video, but just know uh, VA has a little bit more leeway on that than uh, the other programs. Okay, so that's how much they can pay. What can the seller pay? The seller can pay closing costs, as you know. The seller can pay uh, prepaid interest. So the odd days of interest, the seller can pay the prepaid items like the first year of homeowner's insurance, the escrow deposit. One thing to note is tax proration is not included in seller, uh, seller concessions. So, you know, that's going to be there, whether there's anything written in the contract or not, you know, where the seller is paying the buyer for the amount of taxes for the time they've owned the home seller. So that tax proration does not count as seller concessions. Some other things you can do. I was on a, a message board the other day with a bunch of other lenders across the uh, across the country, and somebody kind of came in with a question and said, "Hey, is there a loophole to get around this three percent thing?" Well, no. That's a hard and fast rule from the agencies, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, for instance, on a conventional. But sometimes you can find some other things to spend the money on if you're leaving money on the table. For instance, perhaps you could buy the rate down and add some discount points in there and let the seller money cover that. Perhaps you could pay the upfront mortgage insurance or pay the mortgage insurance upfront. Did you know you can do that? The buyer can pay the mortgage insurance in a lump sum instead of having the monthly premium. So that can lower their monthly payment. There's even some companies even allow a split premium. So maybe you could pay part of the mortgage insurance upfront and lower the monthly premium if the buyer's not putting down 20%. So there's some other things you can do, but just again, be aware the seller can only pay the amount up to the expenses that are disclosed on the CD. Okay, hope that is helpful to you. If you have specific questions for me, please feel free to reach out and I'll be glad to help. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.